Everything we, we've been doing since we were kids is making music together. It's more than a band, it's just like, you know, it's a lifestyle. She says her minor of her father and I know she likes it. She wants a man that's got his game long tight. I think she reminds me... The first time we met, we actually didn't click. I don't know what it was, but... Jealousy. That's what it was. I just I wanted his nose. <laughs> I was jealous of his nose. Yeah. The week after that, we were boys. Became already. best friends. We made music together, and, and th the most unpopular thing culturally, musically, uh, was electro funk. It seems <laughs> so. It was only right for two sort of smart asses like us <laughs> to, to yeah to to start discovering this music, but also really take a genuine liking to it. I grew up listening to Billy Ocean, Huey Lewis, Hall and & Oates, and Palmer mostly, and, and really idolizing those guys. So for me, if I can get closer and closer to those, to the, to those personas, it's actually more and more genuine in a way. Rick James had songs called Give It To Me Baby, and I could never pull that off. I mean, look at me, I could never convincingly sing about that. So I was like, well, maybe I could put this kind of neurotic Jew take on the lover boy thing and update the Robert Palmer persona with, with that neurosis. And it'll be true to what kind of person I am. And also it'll make it endearing for people because they know that that's really who I am and also they can relate to it. Um, and then it gives you like a, a weird modern love song. You know, late 70s, early 80s, even the, up to, you know, 86, is really where... 80, first not 87. No, no, 86. <laughs> uh, basically, <laughs> whatever happened in those nine, you know, eight or nine years is, first of all, the videos came out, MTV was there, and um, also all the new technology came out. The whole concept of synthesizers and synthesized, synthesized music and robot-like music, um, you know, having straight square grooves uh, with machines, that really started in the 80s. This is where all the Marvin Gaye, Holland Notes, all these guys, they, they were throwing technology at them, not knowing how to use it, yeah. and they were just mixing stuff up, and I think that made for something really, really magical. The 80s, even though they, they were for a long time looked upon as uh, a very, like the cheapest, you know, one of the cheapest periods of music, uh, is actually one of the most interesting, the most hybrid, the most, you know, sort yeah. of cross -genre. Experimental. Experimental, really. Like when Africa Bambara came out, yeah. people didn't know, it. They, they used to call it mu music of the future. What we try to do is, is have videos that have these faux cinematographical ambitions, you know, and that's what reminds me of the early days of MTV as well. Well, let's, let's really make a three-minute movie. And obviously, they never really had the means to, to accomplish that, but that's where the charm used to, used to hide. Laisse-moi juste voir si j'arrive à le chanter en plus court. So this is a talk box. I'm basically recording uh, over the track. This is the sound of the synthesizer. Coming into here, going into my tube. And in my mouth, oh yeah, oh yeah. Check it out. Talk box, talk box, talk box. Think when we first came out, just the fact of having an 80s reference was divisive and controversial. Um, I think where we kind of were ahead of, of the curve is that we were paying tribute to black 80s music. And that's still quite marginal. You know, you've got a lot of people coming out with a new wave sound, but not a lot coming out with, you know, this kind of boogie, Rick James cameo kind of thing.
we started Chromio to to do what, whatever we wanted because the other projects weren't really satisfying to us. Yeah. You know, I would be out there making a hundred beats a day that sound the same with the stock sounds, stock sounds that everybody uses just to get by and make money. This is this is where I want to be.